the Army Galassi, made in Italy. Neat little pistol, let's check it out. Galassi is one of those pistols that you look at and you wonder, will it function? Is it decent quality? It looks good, but will it really hold up to shooting? And you know, there are mixed reports out there, but I'll tell you what, everything that I shot through this was excellent. Only had one malfunction the whole time, and I was shooting 25 ACP that was at least 25 years old. The Army Galassi. Uh, this is really a very unique little firearm, uh, but yet there are a lot of them out there. Uh, mainly but during the 50s and 60s, a lot of these were imported into the United States right up until the Gun Control Act of 1968. And it didn't quite meet all the parameters being a very small little pistol. And so these kind of dried up. But you still can find them pretty regularly. Uh, these were made in Italy, uh, and the company was actually founded in 1910. But it was 1914 before they started producing firearms. And uh, that was right at the beginning of World War I. This specimen is not the best of the Galassies. Uh, there are a number of different models, and there is the, the blue, which this was <laughs> the blue. Uh, most of the finish is pretty much worn off, uh, but a lot of them came in a nickel, and I think even some came in a stainless. Uh, there's a lot of sketchy information about these, and uh, I had to do a lot of digging to find out about this. A buddy of mine found this uh, in a house that he bought, and uh, brought it to me to check out and of course to do the review and I was excited to do it. Uh, you know it's just a really beautiful, I mean the lines on this pistol are exceptional and uh, it's it's all steel frame, uh, it's steel slide and so it's just a really a fairly quality piece but when they were being sold they were selling for about 35 to 40 dollars and uh, that was a very budget gun of course back in the in the 50s. These were produced up until the 1970s and one of the reasons why the company went out of business then is because their main market was the US and once again the Gun Control Act occurred it stopped importation of these pistols. Uh, they did make a number of different models and sizes and uh, in fact they made it in a 22, a 22 short, 22 long, A32 ACP and I believe they even made a 9mm short which is the 380. Um, I actually bought one of the 32 ACPs, it's a little bit larger, uh, on Gunbroker just recently. And I haven't, it hasn't come in yet, or I would do some comparison. Uh, there's some uh, different ideas about what model this is. And according to what I've researched, it's the Model 9. I thought it was the Model 6 at first, uh, but the Model 6 was a little more difficult to break down. And there were some other things about it that were improved with the Model 9. Uh, it's still a little bit of a, just different to break down, but really not that big a deal, and, we'll, and I'll show you how to do it, which for those who own these little pistols, uh, it's a puzzle. Uh, but once you know the trick, it's really simple. So we're going to look at that in just a minute. These usually run between $100 and $150. Uh, that's the value. They're not really collectible as such uh, as far as, you know, people that are really serious collectors. Uh, but fine specimens probably could run up to about $200 if they're in immaculate condition. Of course, you know, you'll have guys out there trying to get more for them because the quality and the way these look, uh, they just really look like they would be worth more. It is a striker fire pistol, and when we pull the slide back, it actually engages the striker inside. Uh, the trigger pull on this is actually not bad at all. Uh, when we break it down, we'll look at the fixed barrel design, which fixed barrels on these little blowback pistols allow for decent accuracy. Uh, but with the really small sights and the short barrel, uh, you know, you're not going to get just, you know, pinpoint accuracy with it. And, um, you know, you'll see that right here.
Well, these sights are minimal to say the least, and uh, you can see it does get in there on the target. This was at seven yards. I was using USA 25 ACP, and um, you know, it's. I think if you really practice with this, you could actually get it pretty decent. Uh, but at least it's not all over the paper. Well, pretty close. <laughs> Easy to see targets, good stuff. This little sight trough is very minimal. It fits really close to the frame. Uh, there are some little notches, and then there's a notch at the front, but it's all recessed. And this is made so you can slip this in your pocket without it snagging whatsoever, uh, which is really pretty cool. Uh, of course, that leads to a very small sight picture, but really, uh, when I was shooting, I was able to pick up that front sight pretty easily. Uh, but I think maybe with a little white paint, you might even be better. But this pistol, I mean, really, for man size target, close up, this would have made a very good little pistol for that. Now, the 25 caliber obviously is not, you know, really what you want to have in a self defense pistol. Now, as far as caliber goes, here's the 25 ACP or 6.35. Then we have the 32 ACP, 380, and then we have 9mm. And these are pretty much just to compare the 25. And as you can see, the 25 and the 32 have kind of fallen out of favor as a self-defense round with most experts, with 380 being really the minimal uh, for self-defense, and then, of course, 9mm being even more, and then going up from there. Uh, but these were used for many years. In fact, the CIA really liked really small pistols to be able to hide and maintain, and the Galassi was one that was being used. Of course, no one wants to get shot with any of these calibers, and 25 ACP is better than nothing. But honestly, if you have a choice, I would choose something a little bigger. The barrel is two and a quarter inches in length. Uh, it weighs 12.3 ounces, so it's fairly lightweight. The overall is four and three eighths inch, and it's three and a half inches high. These are fairly reliable. If you're having feeding issues or some problems, it's either the ammunition or there's a problem with the gun because these seem to function very well. Right here is your safety. It just locks into place, and then when you're finished, just drop it into fire. It locks the slide, but it also locks the trigger down. Pull it, and then it'll fire. Uh, this one did have the uh, kind of a fake ivory grips. Uh, one of the things about these is sometimes the grips can be difficult to find, and if you do even, they a lot of times have cracks in them. This has a couple of small places, but it really overall it's in pretty good shape. Uh, looks like the, the, the original screw is here, and they replaced it with a different type screw. I did go on GunBroker, and I found a number of different uh, replacement parts for these. And so if you're looking for something, uh, there are some companies that specialize in these parts. So, um, you know, and there were a lot of these that were brought into the country, so it's not too difficult to find like some pistols are. The only problem that I had at the range at all, I had one failure to fully seat and I was shooting it one-handed it was when I first started and I really blame that more on being a little bit limp wristed with the pistol uh, also this little pin right here above the extractor it started coming out and uh, I took a knife and I pushed it back down and didn't have another problem in fact I probably after I put that down I probably shot about 50 rounds after doing that uh, here's the little magazine. Of course, it has the window right here for you to see your rounds. It does hold seven rounds in the magazine. Uh, it does have a little plastic type uh, base plate on it, and it fits really well right here. And then, of course, you have your old European style uh, mag release, and uh, that's just brought back and pulls out. And that's the way most of these pistols are. Uh, so it just fits right in. Uh, as far as the size of it, it is a very small pistol, but it's easy to hold on to and a lot of that has to do with the light recoil these were actually designed after the Browning model 1910 uh, without any kind of grip safety uh, and so but to forego the problems of trademarks with the Brownings the disassembly was made a little different and with that it was a little bit more um, you know difficult to do so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to disassemble this little pistol it's really pretty simple of course we're gonna go ahead and double check magazines out um, what you do is is you bring back the slide until you get to the pivot point of your safety and then take the safety and just turn it all the way to the back and that releases your striker right here then you bring the slide up and over and then it comes apart it's again it's really simple of course you have a really lightweight recoil spring 
right here you have your firing pin striker system and then back here you have the what captures the uh, the firing pin and this can come out but I'm assuming you have to pull the safety out and we're not going to go into all that uh, you can see the fixed barrel design uh, and again this attaches to the frame it keeps the barrel stationary but really the the metal and the finish of these little pistols is really well done I mean I was very pleased um, with this to reassemble put in your recoil spring take your firing pin there's a little key right here that's going to go through the little slot. It's real easy. Bring your slide, put it over the recoil spring in the barrel. Okay, now once you get it down, you can see it kind of did it quickly. I don't want to show it too quick. Uh, you just bring it back a little bit and then place it in. And then go ahead and this will push in. And when it does, you can bring your slide back, pivot your safety like so, and you're done. A little tricky, but really not that big a deal for this type pistol. Right here, it does have Army Galassi, and uh, this is where it was made, and I don't speak Italian, so I don't want to butcher it, but a uh, caliber 6.35, which is 25 ACP. On the other side over here, it just says Made in Italy, and then you'll notice right here are some Roman numerals, and this is XV and 3 ones, which stands for 18. Down in the description, I'm going to have a list of how to tell when your gun was made by this number right here. Now some of the later models actually had the number stamped or the date stamped. Uh, this one was made in 1962 and that designates the Model 9 for this caliber. And so 1962 and again it wasn't too much longer up until 1968 that these were no longer imported. Um, here the serrations on the slide they kind of sink in a little bit but they allow for it to really an easy way to grip this slide. So, you know, really overall, it's just a neat little pistol from yesteryear and just a lot of fun to shoot. I really didn't know what to expect at the range. Um, you know, this is a buddy of mine. He found it in a house that he bought and uh, just really didn't know if it would re be reliable. I've had some of the Sterlings, which are kind of similar to this, made right here in the U.S., but uh, it really looked quality. So I had high expectations. You know, as far as the 25 ACP caliber, you know, it's really fallen way out of favor, even though it was used for a number of years. But I think one of the problems is, years ago, when people pulled out a pistol, uh, you know, you'd get a different reaction than you do today. And I think a lot of that has to do with drugs and things like that that cause people to, to react differently and not logically. And so really the 25 ACP, I would be very slow to ever carry something like this unless it's just a really deep backup to another pistol that I already had. Now on a side note, one of the infamous things about this pistol was it was carried by Charles Whitman, which was the, sh the uh, sniper shooter. He was a former Marine and this was back in the 1960s at the University of Texas. He sat up in a bell tower and he killed 14 people. There's no evidence that he actually used this pistol, but he did have it on his person when, they, uh, when he was killed uh, there at the scene. And these pistols may not be really highly sought after by collectors, but they're a pretty cool little inexpensive pistol if you're looking for something very small and lightweight. Uh, maybe to have fun with, maybe again as a deep backup. But I think that the Galassi is a very well-made little pistol, uh, even though the price, especially when they first came out, was made very economically. So just a cool little pistol. Um, I did buy one of the 32 ACPs, uh, and I have it coming in. I'll do a review on it, just because I was so impressed with this little pistol. And um, really, if I can talk my buddy out of it, I'll probably try to buy this one from him. <laughs> so the Army Galassi Model 9 and 25 ACP, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. mouse guns. I mean, they're just a lot of fun. They're small. They're usually fairly inexpensive. But what's really cool is that my cigar is bigger than this pistol. Let's do that again. <laughs>